Hey, do you want to hear the most famous Japanese ghost story? It's called Yotsuya Kaidan, or the ghost story of Yotsuya. Yotsuya was an area in the old Japanese capital of Edo, where our characters live. This story is so well known that many call it the most famous ghost story in Japan. There are a buttload of movies based on it. Even that cute girl from The Ring is loosely based on the ghost in this story. Alright, our tragic tale begins with Oiwa, a sad wife in a sad marriage. Her father is a ronin, a samurai without a master, and like many other ronin at the time, he is living in poverty. Being a good daughter, Oiwa secretly steals off into the pleasure district at night to earn extra money to support her father. Her husband, Tamiya Iemo, is also a ronin and also poor. This guy is always up to no good, stealing and scamming people for money. Oiwa wants to leave him and escape her miserable marriage, and her father is all too happy to support her decision. Unfortunately, tragedy strikes. One day, Iemon comes home with grave news. Oiwa's father has just been killed by a bandit. She breaks down, crying, and vows vengeance upon the murderer. Seeing as his wife is only a woman, Iemon promises to avenge her father for her if she agrees to forget the whole divorce thing. And so she stays with him. That turned out to be a not wise decision. Some time later, Oiwa gives birth to a baby boy, and then she becomes sick afterwards. Now, our couple is poor, remember? The additional needs of a newborn and a sick wife makes Iemon grow bitter. He shows little love for wife and child. Now, it happens that next to them lives a rich doctor who has a beautiful granddaughter named Oume. Oume loves Iemon and really, really wants to marry him, but she is jealous of his wife, Oiwa, believing that Oiwa is more beautiful. The old doctor would do anything for his granddaughter, so he agrees to help her. He sends Oiwa an ointment to heal her sickness and tells her to rub it on her face. Unfortunately, almost all the characters in this story are despicable. The ointment burns and scars Oiwa's face. She doesn't realize it though, thinking that the burning feeling is just the medicine working. Iemon, who already resents his wife, remember, catches a glimpse of her face and is disgusted. So when the old doctor delivered Iemon the marriage offer of his younger and more beautiful granddaughter, Iemon was ecstatic. And to sweeten the deal, the doctor promises him loads of money and a job in the service of a powerful lord. Iemon would no longer be a ronin, but a full-fledged samurai. Now if you didn't hate Iemon yet, he's about to do something that will put him in the running for the worst husband in the world. The gears in Iemon's head begins to turn, winding up for betrayal. He needs a good reason to divorce his wife. Iemon pays a friend to forcibly have his way with Oiwa so that he could accuse her of adultery, then divorce her. The friend is a man named Takuetsu. At the designated night, he enters the couple's home while Iemon is away and sees Oiwa and her disfigured face. Now, maybe he feels sorry for her or maybe his conscience caught up with him. Whatever the reason, Takuetsu does not go through with the plan. Instead, he confesses everything. He also reveals that her father was not killed by a bandit, but by her own husband. Her father had tried to convince Iemon to divorce her like she wanted, and Iemon had killed him for it. Oiwa's entire reason for staying with her husband until now was based on a lie. She realizes that she is married to her father's murderer. And then, Takuetsu puts a mirror in front of Oiwa's face. Oiwa recoils at the horror staring at her. Angry, grieving, and understanding what a monster her husband and friends are, Oiwa prepares to go confront the doctor. She tries to comb her still beautiful hair over the red scarred patch that covers half her face. But the comb detaches her hair from her scalp in big bloody masses. This breaks her. Oiwa screams, grabs the sword, and heads for the door. Takuetsu tries to stop her. She evades him, but slips and drives the sword through her throat. Oiwa falls to the floor, a pool of red growing beneath her. Takuetsu can hear her voice cursing Iemon's name over and over, until it fades into silence. The next morning, a servant discovers the corpse and tells Iemon, being the wonderful human being that he is, Eamon is overjoyed and cuts down the servant, then tells everyone that his wife was cheating with the servant. And this is where the story takes a turn. With his wife disposed of, Eamon marries the young Oume. The wedding night does not go as expected, though. 
When he turns toward his bride, instead of her beautiful face, he sees the mutilated face of his dead wife, Oiwa. Shocked, he grabs a sword and cuts her down, at which point Oiwa's face vanishes, revealing that he has just killed his new bride. Iemon runs out, and standing there in front of him is his servant, still with the wound Iemon gave him. Iemon cuts him down too, but obviously it was not his servant, it was the old doctor. He flees, but Oiwa's ghost greets him everywhere he goes. He sees her scarred face and ruined eye on people, in the lanterns, even in his dreams. It becomes hard to tell what is real and what is illusion. Iemon runs deep into the mountains to find peace. But in the end, he finds only madness. Okay, a couple cool things to talk about. Oiwa is an onryo, a vengeful spirit. That's a type of ghost that returns after death to seek revenge. This story, Yotsuya Kaidan, was a kabuki play that came out in 1825 in the Edo period, and it was a huge hit. The iconic, most unforgettable scene for Edo audiences was the one of Oiwa combing her hair. Hair combing was considered super sexy in those days. The play subverted an alluring scene and turned it into something horrifying. The play debuted alongside the hugely popular play about the 47 Ronin, which we've talked about in a previous video. These two plays were shown together, and there was a reason for it. Both plays have similar themes of revenge and samurai honor. The 47 Ronin wants to avenge their lord. Oiwa wants to avenge her father. Oiwa is in a samurai family. She isn't a samurai, but she is part of the samurai class. Honor dictates that she help her father by working in the pleasure district, and that she avenge her father even if it means staying in an unhappy marriage. The two plays let us peer into the mindsets of the people in Edo, Japan. At this point, samurai were not the fearsome warriors of previous eras. It was a peaceful time. Many samurai became ronin, samurai without masters, and often lived in poverty. Edo arts and literature would express nostalgia for the past. Brave and honorable samurai were all gone, people said. Now they were just criminals and ruffians. The two plays contrast with each other. The 47 ronin are portrayed as the models of honor, but Yotsuya Kaidang represents the perception that the samurai had gone downhill, no longer the samurai of old. The ronin in the story are poor and generally terrible people. Iemon was a douche, even his friend Takuetsu was almost willing to force himself upon a woman. So this story was actually suggested by Chris Baratis in the YouTube comments and voted for by patrons on Patreon. Alright, so y'all nuts. We got two more new emperors this week, Eder A. Pacheco and Kuro Koneko. Thank you so much, you are awesome. And then we had a wave of new patrons. What is going on? George Bolgar sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. Find shelter, the Bolgar cometh. Ralph Holdor, Schadenfreulen, Brandon Whitman, oh, thank you Brandon, Tom Buckle, Michael Nooner, he's a spooner, Cheney Lum, and Dark12. Wow, you are kinda making my dreams come true. Anyways, love you and spread the knowledge. I like watching Naruto.